Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is a brand new build. This is a healer build for the Warden and it's called the Hiss Keeper. Now this is one of those builds that's been asked for for a very, very long time. I know there's plenty of healers out there that have all wearing the same kind of stuff. This is wearing similar gear that you've probably seen before. However, this particular video is going to explain to you exactly how to use it and how to make it effective rather than throwing out nice bonuses and buffs which never actually hit the group. So we're going to start off as usual with the stats and go on to the skills and so on and so forth. So first of all, stats, we're going to make sure we've got all our buffs on, which there are a lot and that's the whole purpose of the build. This is all about buffing your group, keeping them alive. So we are sitting on 36.7k max magicka, 20.8k max health, 2.3k recovery. That can go actually a lot, a lot higher. Our spell damage is on 1.8, but it actually goes up to 2.3 almost. And our resistances are on 20.7 and 18.9. 64 points into Max Magicka, and we're using the Ritual Mundestone with a 15% increase to our healing output. This is absolutely insane. Max health, max magic food, and of course we've got loads and loads of buffs which I'll go over as we go through the skills. But this here, the max health, max magic food, is giving us a 2.3 recovery if we have all of our bonuses on. In fact, I think it's higher than that. Yeah, 2.3. So if we put on Witch Mothers instead, which you can use, of course just consider that your... Um, health is going to go down, so we'll max magicka, but your spell recovery will actually go up to 2.9. So you can choose that food if you prefer. It's entirely up to you. So you can have 3k recovery almost, or 2.3, but just consider that, of course, there are some extra bonuses in here that will apply that do not show in our stats, and that is in the form of our skills, which are now about to get into. So, first of all, we go into our first ability, which is the Blue Betty. This is in the Animal Companion skill line. It's a fourth ability to unlock, so you will need a couple of these while you're leveling. Perhaps use the Bear Ultimate for a while to unlock these. And you want to morph it from Betty Netch to Blue Betty. Now, what this does is this will give you 5,376 magic of return over 27 seconds, which is absolutely insane. Plus, it will give us Major Sorcery as well, increasing our spell damage by 20%, which is pretty nice because we do need the increased spell damage to obviously put out more heals. Or larger heals even and when the net is summoned it removes a negative effect now this ability is free so you cast it, it doesn't cost anything but every time you do that you unsummon it and resummon it and you remove a negative effect from yourself so if you've got a dot on you just pop this and it's gone next up is combat prayer this is in the resto staff skill line it's the third ability to unlock starts off as blessings protection morph it to combat prayer now this will actually heal straight away all targets in front of you but this will also grant them minor ward, a minor resolve, increasing their physical and spell resistance by 1, 3, 2, 0. And you will give them minor berserk as well, increasing all of their damage they do by 8%. This applies to you and them. So you'll notice my buff timers at the bottom there. I see one that looks like a, a guy with a pink background or a red background. That's minor berserk. And the other two there, the blue one and the yellow one, that is minor ward and minor resolve. Keep that up at all times along with your Betty. Remember it's frontal, so make sure you aim at your targets. Next up is Expansive Frost Cloak. Now this is in the Winter's Embrace skill line. It's a first ability to unlock as the Warden. Starts off as Frost Cloak, morph it to Expansive Frost Cloak. The reason being is this one has a 28 meter range. Now this used to give a resistance buff, which it still does, of Major Resolve and Major Ward, increasing your group and you, your spell resistances and your physical resistances by 5 to 8, 0, which does stack with Combat Prayer. However, this version of it, is not only 28 meters range in comparison with the other morph, which is 8 meters, but this used to cover 6 people. This now covers 12. So all you do is pop this on, and everybody's resists go up. No one has to carry a resist buff because you've got it covered. You must make sure you keep up your Betty all the time for the recovery, keep up your combat prayer to buff the group, and keep your resistances up to make sure that everybody is not a squishy. This is absolutely insane. This is built for buffs. Next up is Inner Light. This is in the Mages Guild skill line. Now, of course, you don't have to use this if you don't want to. It's only there for passive. It's the first ability to unlock. Starts off as Mage Light, morph it to Inner Light. We honestly don't use this for anything other than passives. It's there for 5% increase to your maximum ma uh, magic pool, which will, of course, increase your heal output and increase your resource pool. So this is here just for stats. If you want to swap it out for something else, you, you can. This also gives us minor uh, major prophecy as well increasing our spell crit chance by 2191 which is 10 percent we do have it on both bars anyway so it's not essential for that bonus but the five percent is what we've got it there for again you can swap this out for something else if you need to um anything that we have on the back bar except for our 
heal, so your bubbles or anything like that, when we get to that, you can put here instead, but you will lose max magic if you do so. So this is just for stats. Next up is, of course, Healing Springs. This is in our Resto Staff skill line. This is our bread and butter for our heals. First ability to unlock, no excuses. Starts off as Grand Healing, and you want to morph this into Healing Springs. Now, this will heal targets that you keep inside the area of effect of this particular cast. It will heal once every second for three seconds, but they can stack. So if you fire one off and it goes three, two, one, zero, don't just leave one on the ground. You can fire another one over top of it and overlap and overlap and overlap, and this can get progressively stronger the more of them you cast. And you restore three, three, eight Magicka for each friendly target hit by the initial heal by up to three targets. So three targets or less, every single one that you hit, will actually give you magic back. So you can gain almost 1k magic back just for casting it. So this effectively only costs us two every cast instead of three. And of course, remember, our recovery is really, really high. So we're constantly recovering, and we're always getting magic back as well. Really, really handy. Just keep this wherever you need it to be, and make sure that people stay inside of it if you can. But don't just cast it once, leave it for three seconds and run off. Make sure it's always running. The next one on top will overlap. Now, if you do have to swap bars, of course, make sure you fire one before you do, because then the next three seconds, you've still got some heals on the ground. The trick to being a healer is not just to keep people up when they go low, but make sure there's constant heals on the ground so that people don't have to keep dipping too low for you to throw out emergency heals. It can get tricky if you do that. Next up is Permafrost. This is our ultimate. This is on uh, Winter's Embrace skill line. You unlock it at level 12 of this skill line. Starts off as Sleet Storm, morph it to Permafrost. Now, this will actually cast a kind of wind around us and it sticks to us so wherever you're standing this is why this particular build you want to stay quite close anything caught in here will of course take damage and after three hits they will be stunned so this is a massive cc and at the same time the most important part this actually applies major protection reducing damage taken for you and nearby allies so anyone caught in this will actually have damage reduced that they would normally take by 30 percent now this stacks with major maim so Nova, a long time ago, was changed to Major Main, where it affects the targets that it hits rather than protects the people that are inside of it. So you can reduce the target's damage output by around 30%. But this reduces the damage you take by 30%, and they do stack together. Obviously, there's multiplicative effects as far as damage reduction is concerned, especially if you've got high resistances anyway. But especially for you squishies, if you're stacking Nova and this together, you will definitely benefit. It's very, very nice indeed. So this is your oh shit button. You only use this in situations where you really, really need it, but we have it on our front bar also for passives, but we'll get to those in a bit. Next up is Enchanted Growth. Now, this is a kind of a burst heal in frontal kind of effect, or area of effect in front of you. It does heal quite a lot, especially if you crit it as well. That's the wrong button. Don't do that. But above all, this is actually a buff to your group as well. Now, this is in the green balance skill line. This is the first ability to unlock. Starts off as Fungal Growth Morph it to Enchanted Growth. Now, this is a conal effect, so obviously the closer you are, the tighter the cone, because it starts from you. As you can see, it get, it spreads out further the further it goes. So, if you're back a bit while you fire this, you'll get more targets in there. But if you're quite close, just be careful where you're aiming it. Now, of course, this is a buff, like I said. This isn't just a heal. It is expensive, so don't over-spam it. It's got 20 meter range, so it's huge. But, above all, this does give your group minor endurance and minor intellect, increasing their stam recovery and mag recovery by 10%. So... While you're keeping up your, your Betty Netch, while you're keeping up your combat prayer and your resistance buffs and heals, you also want to make sure you fire this at least once every 20 seconds to give them that bonus. Now, it says 20 seconds usually, but we are going to go into the gear in a bit and we're going to explain why this is a lot, lot higher than it should be. Next up is Energy Orb. Now, this is in the Undaunted skill line, which is down here somewhere. So the last ability to unlock, so you've got to get your dungeons done, you've got to get this Undaunted level unlocked, but it starts off as Necrotic Orb, which initially does damage. This particular morph does not. Now what this does is cast an Energy Orb, very simple, very similar to the Templar's Spear throwing effect, where if anyone takes a Synergy off of it, their highest resource, whether it be Magic or Stamina, will be refilled by 3960. Also, for taking the synergy itself, because it's a particular morph of it, you will actually heal the target as well. So if someone picks up this synergy, they will heal and they'll gain resources back. Not only that, while it's going past the targets, every half a second this will heal people as well. So we can't demonstrate that here because we don't have a, a friendly target, but if you do have any friendly targets around, if this just passes their path, this will heal them for doing so. 
Be careful not to spam it too much, but you do want to keep these up every 20 seconds or so to make sure people have got plenty of resources. If you're working with another healer, of course you can work in tandem with each other so there's not so much spamming, but make sure that people are getting these bubbles. DPSs need resources, so do tanks, and maybe even the other healer, so help people out with these bubbles. Very, very important. Now, next up is, of course, Sanguine Altar. This is nuts. This we get also from our Undaunted skill line. In fact, we unlock this a lot, lot earlier. This is the first one you unlock. Starts off as Blood Altar, morph it to Sanguine Altar on purpose, because this one has a much, much longer duration. This actually lasts 46 seconds, and this applies minor lifesteal to all enemies in the area of effect. So as long as the enemy is within a 28 meter radius of this particular uh, fountain or altar or whatever, takes damage, people will receive back almost 1k health every second for doing damage. This is absolutely mental. It's a passive heal across the board. It's really, really helpful alongside your healing springs and everything like that. Not to mention, if your health does go too low, you will be presented with a synergy. Not you personally, but your group. They will be able to heal back 59% of their max health just for taking the synergy. And that can crit as well. So it's absolutely insane. So keep this up as much as possible. It's got a very long duration, so it's very, very simple to keep up. But as you can see, this target here has now a debuff above his head. That's minor life steal, so if I do hit him, I will heal off of it. So everyone else is the same. Keep this up. It's very, very nice. Synergy's powerful, the heal's huge, and the heals per second is very, very valid in lots and lots of content, especially stuff where there's lots of heal over time coming in, bleeds and that kind of stuff. Next up is our Flex Slot, and this is Lotus Blossom. It comes from the Green Balance skill, and it's a fourth ability you unlock. Starts off as Lotus Flower, morph it into Lotus Blossom. Now what this does is while it's active, anyone within a 12 meter radius of you, if you do light attacks or heal attack, uh, heavy attacks, you will actually heal off of either one of the two. So your light attacks will heal around 2k a tick, or per hit even, and your heavy attacks can heal around 6k. However, if you crit, this is absolutely nuts. You can actually heal for anywhere up to 20k per hit. It's really, really powerful. This will also grant us major prophecy, increasing our spell critical chance by 2191 on both bars. So you don't have to have it there like you would the Mage Light and just sit it on your bar. You activate it and you've got it all the time. So make sure you keep this buff up as much as possible. And your light attacks and your heavy attacks, which you will need to do, will heal you or a friendly target. Now, if you don't want to use this, you don't have to, you can use other skills instead. Some situations you may want to use your purge. So if you go into this ability here, efficient purge, this is actually in the support skill line. So if you do want to use this, if you have to cleanse lots of people, depending on the content, you can of course slot this. Second ability to unlock, you will need alliance points for this, so you'll have to get in battlegrounds or something like that. Which is fine, because battlegrounds, even if you lose, you'll get alliance points, so don't rage quit, just take your points and leave. Um, Starts off as Purge, morph it to Efficient Purge. This is expensive, which is why we got this particular morph. If you activate it, it will cleanse and other people around you two negative effects off of people. That is very, very important in a lot of higher end content, so you may want to put that on. Also, if you really feel like it, you can put on Deep Thoughts if you want that from Sidric Order skill line. So you can just meditate during moments. Maybe you're going from one boss to the next and you're out of resources, you can use that. But I wouldn't recommend it for most places. Or if you are in situations where you are just healing the tank. So it's just your job to heal the tank. In some situations you may find that. Then you can use Symbosis which starts off as Mend Wounds. And this, if you activate it, it will change your light attacks and your heavy attacks into heals. And all you have to do is aim at the target you want to heal and you can light or heavy. You can still use skills in between as well. But you have to be very, very careful not to drain all of your magic up. These are situational by the way. So the more you know about the healer the better. Failing that, just keep it simple and keep on Lotus Blossom and you'll be just fine. Now, uh, just in case that was confusing, Symbosis, by the way, is inside the Psychic Order skill line. It's the fourth ability you unlock. You need to do the quest line to unlock this. But this particular morph, by the way, will actually heal you for 74% of the damage done as well, or the healing done. So the more you heal the target in front of you, the more you heal yourself as well. This is for situations, like I said, where there's just you and the tank and the other healers healing the group, whatever. Anyway, next up is Bud and Seas. Now, this is your area of effect burst heal and a synergy as well. And what this does is, I'm not going to activate that on the target. This puts down a big circle on the ground. And anyone caught inside of this, when it pops after six seconds, or you deliberately recast it to pop it, they all take a massive, massive heal. A massive breath of life, if you like, almost. This will sit there for six seconds, got an eight meter radius, and... 
if an ally takes a synergy of it, they will also heal themselves for 12.3k over 5 seconds. Now, this is in the green balance skill line. It's the second ability you unlock. Starts off as heal and seed, morph it to budding seed. So this is your leave it on the ground and it will fire by itself. Or put it down and then reactivate it to take that burst heal. So in an oh shit situation, if this is down, reactivate it and everybody gets a heal. Put it down again, reactivate it, everybody heals. Instead of Breath of Life where you just heal the person in front of you, this will heal anyone caught inside of it. It's very, very strong indeed. With our healing done bonuses that we've got, it says 16, 15 to 16k flat. This will actually crit way over 30k. It's absolutely insane. Very, very powerful indeed. Now, our final one is the ultimate on our back bar. Now, this is Enchanted Forest. This is in the green balance skill line. Now, this is absolutely nuts, to be fair. It's really, really cheap. How much ultimate do I have? Uh, we'll... We've got enough almost. I need to make sure he's out of aggro first though, because otherwise I'm going to fire something I don't want you to see yet. So I'll wait for him. Now, what this does is it's really, really cheap. Absolutely ridiculous. 90 ultimate. If you morph this the other way, you will not get ultimate back per heal. But if you do morph it this way, you will. Now, what this does, big heal on the ground, the initial hit. Then over time, it will heal once every second to the enemy's court, uh, to the target's court inside of this, your friend. So up to six people. Now... What this does is, if they're low health, if they're under 50%, you will get back 20 ultimate per person. So if you're low health and five other people are low health, you get 100 ultimate back instantly. And then you can reuse it, because it's only 90. Do you see where I'm going with this? This is really, really cheap. Now what you do is you place this on the ground, big trees pop up, everybody in here gets healed over time, and if you get your ultimate back, you can spam it again. This is your, alongside this and alongside this, and all your heals and all the rest of it, and keeping your combat prayer up and such, you can basically use this all the time. You can constantly use this. So where the Templar basically relies on burst heals, where you just spam Breath of Life over and over and over, or the area of effect heal that they have as well, this is more on the ground, spamming out hots, and keeping your ultimate up as much as possible as well, and you've got massive healing power. It's absolutely insane. Not to mention the fact you have group resistance buffs, which nobody else in the game has. It's very, very strong. Now, you can swap these out. If you don't need or want Permafrost, or you don't need or want Enchanted Forest. You can use Revive and Barrier. This does come from the support skill line. This is Barrier to start with, Revive and Barrier if you morph it to this. This will give you a massive damage shield. In fact, if you have all your buffs and bonuses on, this can do about 30k damage shield, maybe more. And, of course, you can heal for over 30k over the 30 seconds as well. It looks like flat stats there, but our buffs ran out, so that's obviously going to look a bit different. Let's see if we can get that up there. Skills, uh, Revive and Barrier. And, of course, the higher your spell damage, which we'll do here the stronger it will be. You can see there, 31k damage shield with 34k heal over 30 seconds. Very, very strong if you need it. But I personally prefer Permafrost because of the damage mitigation. Also, you can use Warhorn. So, of course, a lot of people want this in Trials and Dungeons and such to kind of help burn the bosses down quite quickly. And this will give all of your group 10% increase to Stamina and Magicka for 30 seconds. And, of course, it will increase their damage output if they crit because this will give them major force, increasing their critical damage normally by 9 seconds. But this is slightly different on this build. So we will get to that, like I said, in the, in the stats, in the gear, in a moment. But normally this is a lot less. So you've got some choices. Permafrost on the front, Enchanted Forest on the back. But any that you want to swap out for whatever situation, Warhorn and Barrier are also very, very good options. Warhorn, by the way, um, is also acquired via Alliance Points, just like Barrier is for support abilities. Um, Warhorn is in Assault. Now, passives. This is where things start making a little bit more sense. I'm deliberately leaving some stuff out so we can get to the gear. But we're going to go over passives. First of all, the Animal Companion stuff. Now, when one of your Animal Companions is killed or unsummoned, you will actually restore health. So you will heal every time you reapply your uh, Betty Netch. This here, when you cast an Animal Companion's ability while you are in combat, you will generate 4 ultimate. So every time you use that while in combat, you'll get 4 ultimate once every 8 seconds. So reapplying it will just generate ultimate. Nice and easy. This will increase your Magicka and Stam Recovery by a whopping 12% if an Animal Companion ability is slotted. This is slotted. We get this bonus all the time. Not to mention the recovery we actually get from the skill. Then, increases your damage done by 3% for each Animal Companion ability slotted. Now, this isn't hugely essential while we don't do damage, but we do have light attacks, we do have heavy attacks, and our heals that we get from our lights and heavies, whether we're using um, the Lotus Blossom or from our Resto Passives, which are coming up to, the, the more damage we do with our lights and heavies, the stronger that heal. So this does actually contribute, so you do want to get this as well. 
Green balance, of course, we only have green balance abilities on our back bar, and this is for a very good reason. Now, when you heal yourself or an ally under 40% health with a green balance ability, you gain major mending, increasing your healing done by 25% for 4.2 seconds. That's normally three seconds. We're going to get to the gear. We have longer duration on all of our buffs, which is why this character is built this particular way. But above all, if you heal someone with a green balance ability while their health is low, you get major mending, which means your heals are higher, which is insane. So if you pop this, for example, or budding seeds, or any, any of these actually. So we've got Enchanted Growth, we've got Lotus Blossom, we've got budding seeds, or we've got our ultimate. Any of these abilities that hit a player who is under 40% health will give you major mending, which will of course boost the strength of the heals. Next up, when you heal an ally with a green balance ability, you gain 250 Magicka or 250 Stamina, whichever resource pool is lower. This effect can occur once every second. So while we are healing with these abilities also, our lowest pool will actually gain resources back. So we can block and dodge roll and all that kind of stuff more because we'll actually get stamina back with it being our lowest pool. Now, increases your healing done with green balance abilities by 2% for each green balance ability slotted. As you will see on this particular bar, we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that gives us a full 8% increase to all of the strengths of these abilities. We've got healing done going through the roof based on our setup and our Mundestone. And this also boosts these abilities only. Notice, this doesn't increase your healing done by all heals. It only increases the healing done by green balance, which is why we've got green balance all on the same bar. When you activate a heal on yourself or an ally, you grant the target minor toughness, increasing their maximum health by 10% for 28 seconds. That's supposed to be 20 seconds. Again, we're going to go over this when we get to the gear. We have some shiny, shiny buffs. Now, remember that the Betty Natch actually heals us. We don't have minor toughness on us at the moment. No minor toughness. So, we'll take a heal. And now we have Minor Toughness, increasing our health. Which is why we're on 20.8k. And why if we do use squashy food with lots and lots of recovery, we can actually still benefit from quite a decent health pool. Remember, anyone that gets healed will get Minor Toughness. This is a buff for the Warden. Nobody else gets it. You can't even get it from Warhorn anymore because a long time ago they removed it from that skill for this purpose. So these passives are very, very important. If you heal someone, they get minor toughness, so more health. If you heal someone with a green balance ability, you get resources back. If you heal them with green balance while low health, you get increased healing done. It's absolutely insane. Get all of these passives. Now, finally, for the Warden skill lines, we want these skills here. This here increases the chance of applying chilled status effects with our Winter's Embrace abilities by 200%. Now, this is a Winter's Embrace ability. This does apply ice damage, and ice damage can apply minor maim. So anyone caught inside this, not only can they take damage, get stunned, and have major protection applied to your group, and uh, their speed reduced as well, plus take damage, they can also be affected with minor maim as well. So this is very, very handy. Make sure you get this passive. This increases your physical and spell resistance by 500 for each Winter's Embrace ability slotted. This is why this is on the front bar and not on the back. This ability here... And this one, Frost Cloak, these two both come from this skill line, so they both equally give us 500 resistances across the board. So we've got a thousand resists just for having these two here. If I put it on the back bar, sure, I'll have 500 there, but that would mean I need Enchanted Forest on the front. If I did that, I would lose 2% heal and done by green balance abilities on this bar, and I would only have 2% effectiveness of that ability on the front bar instead of 8 on the back. So you see why these are chosen in this particular order. Larger healing bonus on this bar, resistance bonus on this bar. It has been done for a reason. Reduce the effectiveness of snares applied to you by 15%. We are quite slow. We'll get hit with snares all the time. And of course, we don't want to waste all of our stamina sprinting. But if we do get caught by them, we are 15% less slower than everybody else. Increases your magic and frost damage by 6%. This isn't hugely essential, but again, like I said earlier, if you're doing light attacks or heavy attacks or anything like that, that will increase the strength of your heals as well. So for doing magic damage with your staff uh, or frost damage with this, you can actually do a little bit more. But above all, like this, um, the magic hit from this particular weapon will be improved. So your heals from those passives will help. Now, resto, of course. Now, if you do a heavy attack, you will give yourself major mending, increasing all of your healing done by 25%. And yes, that's stacks of your healing done bonuses that we already have, which we've got a few more to reveal at the moment. But we've got lots and lots of healing done. This does stack with it. Of course, this doesn't stack with our green balance passive, but you can apply it with a green pa balance passive and then overwrite it with this. So you can increase the uptime, basically. You can fire it off with one, then do a heavy attack straight after, stuff like that. But essentially, do a heavy attack, you'll get major mending. 
Now, this is supposed to last three seconds, but we've got a bonus to our set, so that's why it's longer. But here, heavy attack. See that yellow symbol at the bottom there? That's major mending, so all of our heals are increased. So, without any real buffs or anything, we'll look at our stats on healing springs, for example. This goes a lot, lot higher when we're buffed. It says 2.5k. So, we get major mending. That becomes 3.1. If you start getting even more buffs, which we have got, I will get to them in the gear. That can get really, really strong really, really quick. So your major mending is very, very important. While you're trying to sustain, make sure you do fire off a, an occasional full heavy attack and you will get that increased uh, healing bonus. So that's very, very important indeed. Not to mention, of course, you heal yourself with this passive um, or a nearby ally for 45% of the damage inflicted by the final hit of your fully charged heavy attack. This is what I was trying to say earlier about the Lotus Blossom and this and increasing the damage of your resto stuff. It's not essential to do as much damage with your resto stuff as possible, but it does help increase the heals that people or you receive for doing so. So do have a little bit specced into your uh, resto stuff damage if you can based on your passives or your champion points, which we will go over. I do have that covered already. Now, this increases your healing done by 15% for allies that are under 30% health. So the lower their health, the larger your heals, and that does stack with our green balance bonuses as well. Restores an additional 30% magical when you complete a heavy attack. So, of course, we do heavy attack for our sustain. We can heavy attack for major mending, and then we can throw out some nice heals. But, of course, for being a resto staff, in comparison to any other weapon, we actually get more back for heavy attacking. So make sure you do utilize a heavy attack every so often. You will need to. Restores 540 Magicka when you block a spell. So if you are getting hit with magic abilities and you do block them, you will get magic back. Very handy. And of course, finally, increases your healing with Resto Staff spell abilities by 5%. So this is a flat bonus to your actual healing done with Resto Staff abilities. And of course, the main bread and butter one we're using is Healing Springs and of course Combat Pro as well. Both of these are affected. We are using five pieces of light armor, so you do need these passives. This one reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to us based on how many pieces of light armor are worn and reduces the cost of sprint. Now, we are wearing five pieces, so we get 20% bonus to the effectiveness of snares or reduce the effectiveness of snares, and this does stack with our warden passives as well. So we've got, we double up basically on two different bonuses, which makes us very fast inside snared mechanics or uh, slow mechanics where you're moving really, really slowly. And of course, if we do sprint out of those, then it costs us less anyway. Uh, this increases your mag recovery based on each piece worn and reduces the cost of abilities, which is very, very handy indeed. You've got to make sure you get those. This increases your spell resistance for each piece worn. This requires five pieces, so it increases your spell crit rating by 2191. So this is very, very handy, but you must have five pieces. And this increases your spell penetration by 4884 for five pieces worn as well. Remember, this will increase our damage we do with our lights and heavies, which isn't massive for damage output, but it does benefit to our heals from those damage types. We're using one piece of medium armor. You are going to want these. This will increase your stam recovery by a small percentage and reduce the cost of stam abilities. We're not using any stam abilities, but we do need the recovery because we'll have to block, dodge, roll, and break free. This is for sneaking, so you don't really need this, but there is one mechanic in the game, which is in March of Sacrifices, where you are required to sneak, so that helps to get the cost down a little bit. Um, and, of course, increases the movement speed um, by 3% if you sprint, so that is also tying in with our reduction to cost if we sprint, and also reduces the cost of dodge roll. So, we will be dodge roll, and we are using only one piece, but this is a valid passive to get for that tiny, tiny bonus. Heavy armor, of course, we are using one piece of heavy as well. This will increase our physical and spell resistances for each piece worn. This increases our health recovery by 4%, which we don't really need to worry too much about because we are a vampire, of course, but we do get 108 magicka and stamina back for taking damage once every 4 seconds for each piece worn, so this does help a little bit. And, of course, this increases our max health by 2% for each piece worn, so this is very, very important as well to keep our health up. These ones, by the way, you don't need because they're for 5 pieces only. Now, we are, of course, a vampire, so we will take advantage of two very important passives. This one increases our stam and mag recovery by 10% across the board all the time, and this will mean that we take less damage the lower our health is so while under 50 percent health you can take up to 33 percent less damage the lower you go so you're very very tanky at low health and with us being the healer obviously we want to make sure we can take advantage of our heals so being alive and being able to heal rather than being dead and not being able to heal makes a big difference this undeath passive is insane uh you can also get this which reduces the severity of health recovery being a vampire as well through stages four uh two to four but that's not hugely essential that's entirely up to you we don't need any fighters guild abilities apart from this. We may accidentally kill stuff. We might get the kill and blow. If we do, take that nine ultimate if it's undead, daedra, or werewolf. 
Now, Mage's Guild, we don't really need all of these if we really don't want to, because the only thing we really want is Inner Light. But something I would recommend is that you get some more passives in here, because then that way you can unlock Magicka Controller, which increases your max magic and your Magicka Recovery for each skill slotted. We have one, so although this gives us a 5% bonus, this actually gives us 2% more on top of it. So this is actually a 7% bonus across the board instead of 5. It's very, very nice indeed. And it gives us recovery as well. Now, Sigic Order we don't really need unless we're going to use Sigic Order skills, so I won't go into those. Undaunted you will need. This one here, if you take a Synergy, you will gain back 4% max Magicka, max Stamina, and max Health, which is insane. Take the bloody Synergies. Don't look at them and leave them stand on the floor. Take them. Now, this increases your max health, stamina, and magicka across the board by 6% if you're wearing three different types of armor. If you're wearing two types, it's four. If you're wearing one type, it's two. So, 2% 2 for each type. We are actually wearing all three types, hence the bonus. We're wearing light, medium, and heavy. But must make sure, of course, that we're using five light. That's essential. Assault, you don't really need. Support, you may need if you're using Efficient Purge or you're using Reviving Barrier, whichever the two you're using. You will need this one here. This increases your Magicka Recovery by 10% for each support ability slotted. So if you have this on, whichever bar it's on will gain an extra 10% Magicka Recovery. If you have two of them on the same bar, you'll get 10% Magicka Recovery. It's mental. Now, of course, we are an Argonian, if that wasn't already obvious. We've got a tail and we're a lizardy thing. Now, <clears throat> this increases your experience gain with Resto Staves while you're leveling them up. Obviously, that doesn't help past 50, but before 50, you'll level them faster. And you go faster while swimming, which is hilarious because we don't really need that. But that's not what we're in Argonian for. We're in Argonian because these passives are broken as hell, especially with the recent update to race or passive changes. Because we are now given a 6% flat healing done bonus. We have 15% healing done in our Mundustan. We have 6% healing done here. We have a healing done bonus if we get major mending, if we do a heavy attack or use green balance while things are under 40%. Our healing done bonuses are huge. So this is absolutely insane. Get these passives straight away. This of course increases our max health by 1k and our disease resistance by 2, 3, 10. So we actually have a reduction to damage incoming from disease damage. And of course, we are immune to disease status effects. Being a healer, this is extremely helpful because disease state effects will give us minor defile, which will actually reduce our healing done and healing received by 15%. We do not want our healing reduced as a healer. We need to keep people up. We need to keep ourselves up. So this immunity to that status effect is absolutely insane. Also, increase your max magical by 1k, which is quite handy, but when you drink a potion, you will restore 4k health, magic, and stamina. No matter what the potion is, you'll get 4k of all three resources back. I'm going to show you the pots we're using in a moment, and based on the way that we've set this character up, they are already borderline broken in terms of strength. It's very, very strong, so this is crazy. Get these passives. Also, alchemy. This is the most important passive in the game as far as I'm concerned. Medicinal use. When using potions... The effects will be 30% longer. So, if you use crafted potions, they tend to last 45 seconds. That's a cooldown. But the actual bonuses you get from them do not. They will run out before the cooldown, of course. If you have this passive here, there is a, a guide in the description, by the way, for leveling this very, very fast. If you have this passive, your crafted potions, if, for example, they have a recovery bonus or a spell damage bonus or anything like that, will actually last 47 seconds which means you can keep them active 100% of the time and they'll never ever run out as long as you pop it as soon as it's ready to go again. It's very, very strong indeed. Now we're going to get into the gear. And this is why we've held back on some of the information because this is where I'm going to start explaining where everything goes and why everything is so powerful, why everything has got such a big healing dumb bonus and why our buffs are longer than they should be. So... First of all, we are using a Master's Resto Staff. Now, do not panic if you don't have this. If you don't have it, you can use any two-piece bonus you like that will benefit you. It could be a health bonus, a max magic bonus, a crit or recovery bonus. You can use any staff here that you like. But to optimize this particular build, the Master's Staff. Remember, we are built for buffing, and we are deliberately built for staying close. So what this does is if we use some stamina up, hold block, you don't get stand back. But watch this. My stamina is going up. Slow but steady, but the more healing springs in there, the better. This staff actually gives stamina back to you and other friendly targets affected by your healing springs every time this is fired. So the initial hit. So all people have to do, stam DPS, tanks, healers, even if they're blocking, if they're inside here, there's the boss, they're all busy. And you start throwing these healing springs out like you should be. Just for doing what you're doing, they are constantly getting stamina back. 
I don't see this utilized enough, but it's absolutely nuts. It's very, very strong, very underrated, but you want powered. The reason being is because we've got 15% healing done in our Mundustone. We've got 6% healing done as an Argonian. We have Major Mending as well, which is 25% if you do apply it. And you have a 9% healing done here. Our healing done bonuses are bloody huge. Back bar. Now, this is where the sets come into play. We are using Olorime's Resto. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be um, the regular version if you want. The only difference is 1k max magic. But this is very, very important to know. You'll notice that I've got three pieces on at the moment. That is because I'm on the front bar currently. You want the staff on the back bar. Powered with a reduction to weapon damage and spell damage glyph on it if you can help it. This has magic recovery. Gives us minor Aegis. So no matter what bar we're on, we always get that 5% reduction to damage in Dungeons and Trials. It has mag recovery as well, plus a max magic if you have the perfected version. If not, you just have 1k max magic less. Now, this is incredibly important. Casting abilities that leave an effect on the ground, whether it be heal or damage, will create a circle of might for 10 seconds on the ground, and you and your allies that stand in the circle will be given major courage. Now, this normally lasts 30 seconds, but it's currently lasting 42, which is huge. Why? Because we're using one staff and three jewelry, by the way, but you can use it in any order as long as you've got three pieces. Because we're using your vaults. Your vaults come from Scale Caller. We've got the vines on absolutely everything to get as much healing done flat as possible. This has mag recovery, mag recovery, healing done. Again, another healing done bonus, which is massive. And increases the duration of all major and minor buffs and damage shields you apply to yourself and allies by 40%. So this should last 30 seconds, but instead it lasts 42. We have this on the body, so no matter what bar we're on, we can actually still swap and keep it. We keep this on both bars. We have Olorimes on the back bar so that we can control what casts this ability. Now, how this makes any sense is how I'm now going to hopefully describe this. This is only fired by ground-based abilities. So if we have double Olorimes and we start firing healing springs, we're going to fire this. Now, also combat prayer can apply it. So I might make it land here. Or I might be healing someone there quickly and it lands here, but the rest of the group didn't get it. It can land in some really messed up places. And I've seen so many people get this wrong. Now, what we've done deliberately is we've got one ground-based AoE on our back bar. Now, yes, the altered can count as AoE as well, so you have to be very careful when to apply this. But this here is our main ability that will fire this. And how this applies is this. All we need to do is place this here. And there's the circle. Now, after 10 seconds, everyone in here has got it already because it lasts for 42. We can reapply it and put it here or here or wherever you need to, as long as you're in combat. The trick is to only use that ability to fire it. Now, of course, you can use the funnel to fire it as well because it's ground-based, so be very careful of that. But this, if as long as you use button seeds to always fire your Olorimes, you will never, ever fail it. Because on the front bar, you have to be in combat. Look. Healing Springs. Combat Prayer. Doesn't fire. It can't fire. I'll deliberately fire it now. And then I'll carry on doing what I'm doing. So for all those Healing Springs spammers who keep placing it in the wrong place, that is no longer a problem for you anymore. It goes on this bar. Now, the back bar is deliberately green balance, as we've already gone over. So this can fire it, which is where you want it anyway. This should be where you want it anyway. And Budden Seed is where you want it anyway. You have full control of this ability, and if you cock it up, it is literally your fault. There's no way to get it wrong on your front bar at all, because it's not there. We only want it to fire on the back. So that's very, very important. Now, the buffs themselves. This gives us Major Sorcery for 27 seconds. The Betty does. But instead, if you look at the bar, the hand with the blue blue background and the spark, that's 37 seconds. We've actually got 37 seconds instead of 27. That's insane. Combat prayer should last 8 seconds. It lasts 11.2. This should last much, much less. It lasts 33.6 seconds instead. Now, of course, on the back bar, we've got this enchanted growth bonus, which gives us a 28-second recovery bonus. This is supposed to be 20 seconds. But because we've got your vaults on, me and everybody else, we all get 28 seconds. This as well, um, obviously we get minor lifesteal, which stays on the target during this period, so that doesn't count. This one here does give us major prophecy, which is supposed to last 20 seconds. Instead, it lasts actually a lot longer. It lasts 27, almost 28 seconds, in fact, instead of 20, like I said already. And, of course, major mending, which is in our passives. And 
major minor toughness as well. It's supposed to last 20 seconds, last 28. You can see where we're going with this. Every single bonus we have is huge in terms of its duration. So, Combat Prayer doesn't have to be spammed as often. The Resist buff doesn't have to be used as often. This buff here doesn't have to be used as often. None of these have to be used as often as they normally would, and our rotation or our healing is less panicky because we can just relax and take advantage of those long-durated effects, which will help our sustain. It's very, very helpful indeed, and really, really powerful if you utilize it properly. Not to mention, of course, we've already shown that this here, Major Courage, actually lasts a very long period of time. Instead of 30 seconds, it actually lasts 42. And it will just constantly reapply if you stand in it, or it will just last the full duration if you run out of it. Remember, just because that's gone, doesn't mean the buff is gone. You just have to walk in and walk out again. So if you're a DPS or a... Well, if you're a DPS, basically, take advantage of this. Now, <clears throat> what else is useful? Potions. I didn't go over these on purpose. We're using tripods, which is basically health, magic, and stand back. Look at that. 12,560 as a heal. Now let's get Major Mending up, shall we? 14.8k. When we pop this potion, we get 14.8k health back. That's absolutely insane. And that's all based on our healing done bonuses. That's got bugger all to do with crit or spell damage or anything like that. Our actual healing done is so high that instead of that being an 8k heal, that's almost 15. Really, really strong. Not to mention, we get max magic and stand back. We get 7.5k of each. Also, just note very carefully here, our recovery bonuses, our mag recovery, our stand recovery, our health recovery, all don't last 47 seconds like they normally would with um, medicinal use. Because we have your worlds, these are major buffs. These do get a 40% increase, and they last a minute each. So this potion is absolutely nuts. And let's just make it even more scatty, shall we? Go into skills. What did we do a little while ago with the Argonian skill passives? In here. Not only do we get 14.8k health back from that heal, not only do we get 7.5k back from the other two resources, but we get 4k of every single one. So that 14.8 just turned into an 18.8. We have a 20k heal by popping a potion. Absolutely mental. Really, really powerful. Now, to go back to the gear, we'll just go over the traits really quickly, then we'll explain the monster set. We're using power on the front, power on the back. Yes, you can turn this into a destruction stuff if you prefer, but just be aware that your resto passives will not carry over to this particular bar, and you can, of course, swap out your flex slot for Ellie Drain or anything like that if you really want to. But this is a resto resto on purpose, assuming that you're normally going to be with another healer, especially a tempo who can use uh, Restore and Aura or whichever the morph is called in Area of Effect anyway, so that's not necessary. But you can swap this if you want. But you want to have a weapon and spell damage increase on the front bar and a weapon and spell damage reduction on the back. This is very important. In between your healing springs, light attack. You'll proc your glyph, you'll have bigger heals. Back bar, in between skills, light attack, you'll debuff the target. I don't see enough healers doing that, but you should light attack. What's the point in a glyph if you're not going to light attack? Now, our main set is, of course, Yorvils, which is on the body. Divine's on everything. Max Magicka on everything. Jewelry is Olorimes. We're using one spell damage glyph, but you can change the recovery you prefer. Just bear in mind that your max heals will be less if you reduce your spell damage. But our recovery is really, really high. So Arcane on everything, recover on everything if you want, or two recovery, one spell damage. Depends on what you're comfortable with. If you're really comfortable with your sustain, you can even increase this to another spell damage bonus if you want, and your heals will be even stronger. But the choice in that matter is up to you. Now these can be in any order, you can have the Jewelry of Olorimes, or you can have the Jewelry of Yorvals, it's up to you, and then three pieces of Olorimes on the body. You just have to make sure that when you swap bars, you have five Yorvals at all times. That's why we have Olorimes staff on the back. You must have this staff on the back. Now the front, like I said, is a Masters one, but you can use anything else you want. Just don't have two Olorimes because you'll really mess it up. And now the monster set, before you scream, we're using Lord Wardens. This particular build is made to be up close and personal. Now... This is very, very powerful. We can stay close to the group. We can give everyone a resistance buff. We can give everyone a berserk buff with our combat pro. We can do all the usual stuff healers can do, but we are very, very good at close range. Especially if we stay inside our own heals, or our own trees, or our own major protection if we're using permafrost. We've got to be close anyway. So while we're close, we are using the helmet and shoulders of Lord Warden to not only increase our own survivability and resistance, which is nuts, but if we take damage, and we will be, people around us will actually have an increase to their resists. So we buff them with a flat resistance here, 
we keep them up with our basic skills and bonuses and shit. And then, when that fires, which it will, they will get another almost 4k resistance across the board as well. You are buffing the squishies like hell. You give them more health, you give them more recovery, you give them more resistances, you give them everything they need. And your heals don't even have to be anything more than what you've already got. You don't need something to over boost additional heals because it's already doing its job because they don't take as much damage. Now, other options of course, if you prefer. Uh, Troll King, you can put this on, and if you heal people under 50% health, they'll get a massive health recovery bonus. Of course, you can use this as well, which is from Darkshade, which basically, when you heal people, you have a chance to spawn a Dwemer Spider out, and it'll give them stamina and health back, which is quite nice. But above all, if you're not going to use Lord Warden, I highly recommend Bogdan and Night Flame. You get an increased max magicka bonus, and the more heals you do, basically, the higher chance you have of making this fire out, and it will heal once a second for five seconds with a six-second cooldown. It's a very powerful set, really good for stack and burns, but... If you just want to buff the resistances and keep on with your healing, Lord Warden inside a stack is really, really powerful for this particular build. Not used very often on healers, I know, but there's so many copy and paste healers out there all doing exactly the same stuff. It's hopefully refreshing to see something a little different. But those are your two major choices, but the rest are also good options as well. It's entirely up to you. Now, remember, keep your betting etch up at all times. Keep your blossom up at all times if you can. Now, those two don't have to be reapplied as quickly as you would think. Because, obviously, if you want the recovery, keep the betting up all the time. But if you just want major sorcery, you've got 37 seconds on that. So, if he does run out, obviously, you want to reapply him because he's free. But don't panic. You've got a longer duration on your sorcery buff anyway. Same goes for Blossom. Of course, you'll lose the light and heavy attack bonus if that runs out. But you will keep your major prophecy bonus for a longer time anyway. So, that's also something to consider. But anyway, keep those two buffs up. Keep your resist buff up every 33 seconds. Otherwise, people will start dropping. Keep your combat prayer up almost every 12 seconds. And in between then, keep up your healing springs at least three stacked at a time. Make a habit of three of them with a light attack every time to keep up your glyph. It's a bit laggy on this server because PTS has been playing up, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And on the back bar, keep up your funnel. Keep up one button seeds every six seconds or so if you can help it. And keep up your fungal growth as well. So above all, it's about keeping these buffs up. For recovery and resists and then just keeping your heals up in between if you do get into an oh shit situation button seeds and then tap it again or just leave it running for six seconds and let it do its work it's up to you your ulti on the back bar should be used as much as possible if you've got 90 ultimate fire it there's no point leaving it until christmas unless of course you're planning on saving permafrost for a situation that you're going to need it in so you can fire ultimates like hell but you don't have to all the time if you're saving for certain pulls now, um, we're going to go over the champion points, and then we're pretty much done. Same as always on most of my builds, these are pretty much standard for me. But if you want to change them, depending on the content, you of course can do. 72 points into Ironclad, so we get 23% to reduction for incoming direct damage. 64 and 64 for 13% reduction to all other damage, and 19% reduction to damage over time. We are 19 points into Quick Recovery. You'll probably res people as well, so 10 points in this tree will unlock the Field Physician passive. Do not res... All the time as a healer do not you're the one healing if you stop to pick someone up no one's getting any heals you should be the last one to res anyone but in the event of you being the last one alive and you having to do that you will get this passive here which will reduce the damage you take while you are picking someone up just remember of course you do have major resolve and major ward in your arsenal you do have minor resolve and minor ward in your arsenal as well and you have the lord warden helmet so if you are taking damage while resurrecting people all those bonuses will be applied and you'll take this passive as well. It's very, very nice indeed. 90 points here, although we do get this benefit here, isn't just for the sake of it. We will get 5% increased healing received as well, which means your heals that you receive from you or other people. 44 points into Warlord to reduce the cost of break free. We'll need that. 75 points into Tenacity to increase the recovery or that we get back from our heavy attacks and 75 into Arcanus as well for our flat recovery. 76 into dodge roll you don't actually need anything more than 72 here but we'll take the treasure hunter passive for more higher quality loot because we're not going to use it for anything else 81 points into elfborn increasing our critical heals by 24 percent and 75 increasing our healing done by 14 percent don't go any higher than these because the diminished returns are huge if we want one more percent here it's going to cost us 19 points if we want one more percent here it's going to cost us 25 points which means we wouldn't be able to take advantage of some of these Elemental Expert, we've got 10% in here, and we've also got a nice penetration bonus as well, so that our lights and heavies do a little bit more damage, so we get a bigger heal out of them. And the same here with Staff Expert, same applies. So we've got a 20% increase to our lights and heavies here, meaning that the returns we get from them from our Resto passives and from our uh, Lotus Blossom as well is slightly higher. 
23 into Thermiturge as well, because this does also apply towards our heavy attack bonus, because we do use Thermiturge to make our heavy attack stronger. So you can do a little bit more damage and get bigger heals from here as well. Damage isn't essential as far as healers are concerned, depending on what you're doing, but this will contribute towards how we are particularly set up in this build. Okay, so hope for the help. Hope it wasn't too boring. Hope you now have a better understanding how to approach this particular build. Keep your buffs up, protect your group, and make sure they don't die. And now you know how to actively place Olorimes without it going to the wrong places. Hopefully. Anyway, once again, thank you all very, very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate the support. There's plenty more stuff coming, especially with the new update coming, because Elsewhere is with us very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for those. But above all, again, thank you very, very much for watching. If you're not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside of the channel, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website zynodegaming.com. Also, there's a new Loot Crate link in the description as well. I'm now a Loot Crate partner, so if you want to get cheaper boxes, go and press that button and use my name in the promo code. Anyway, once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.